Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wee Bombastic Few yet again. We got back to back weeks for you. Are you surprised? I am. And I think Brent is too. However, Daniel is not surprised. With that, I will introduce to you our other hosts. Wait, we only have one other host. The Russians got Daniel again. <laughs> we, uh, it's super unfortunate. It turns out he's a highly, highly valuable political prisoner. And so we've been having issues of the, the he gets captured. And so we trade him for uh, one of our guys. And it, it, it's, it's a whole mess. It's you don't want to go ordeal. into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really problematic. But uh, he theoretically, if ever if talks go good, Geneva Convention stuff uh, <laughs> rules they can't keep him for longer than forty eight hours without a doctor's note, and so um, we our, should have him back next week. Our friends in the seals and the green beret are on it. They're we're going to get Daniel back. Don't worry. Mm. But uh, I'm Brent. So hello. Yeah. We're we're we uh, we were going to cancel the episode, but then uh, I valiantly valiantly. Lindsay wanted to cancel everything. He said, let's shut down the whole podcast. Let's never do it again. But I was the bastion that said, no, the people need content. No, and so no, no. I, said, I don't, I don't know do about something. that one. Let me, let me read the text exactly. All right. Well, I don't think we, <laughs> we, what, what, we don't have a, what's the person that, um, the person in a courtroom? Oh my goodness. Uh, stenographer. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Let uh, me, let me go and read need it back to ha- for you. We don't need to have Linda read out the tapes. It's fine. We'll, ju- we'll Daniel we'll, goes, just go into it. Daniel goes, in theory, I'm available, but I'm at my parents' house without recording equipment. And then Brent almost, almost, um, half a day late or more than a half a day late. He goes, seems like Sorry, we may I'm just want to skip college. this week. And whoa, look at that. A text from me it says, well, we could maybe do something small or short to uh, keep content consistent. I don't know about you, Brent, but that does not sound like your story adds up. Well, I obviously the the texts were doctored. Yeah, uh, not none of this would be admissible in a court of law. And now we're just going to learn what I learned in extra high voltage engineering. So everyone, take out your notebooks. This is going to be on the test for impulse generators. You're going to want to use... As um, exciting as that is, uh, (laughs) as you could probably tell, this is going to be a little different of an episode. We're going to call it a little mini episode. I don't know what we'll put it on, what we'll label it as, but it's going to be season three, episode 4.5. I don't think Spotify will let us put points, so I might just have this... uh, I don't know what I'll put this as. Who knows what this is? (laughs) This is a bonus, maybe? Is this a bonus? Yes, I'll, I'll take it. Out. Out. I'll figure it out later. Uh, so, okay, speaking of which, I I guess this could be a mini icebreaker before we continue on, but I realize that with this podcast, we can be considered content creators. And as cool oh, yeah. as that sounds for most people, I feel like that term is thrown around so much that it's like not necessarily always like much more than a neutral comment. So I feel like I'm very with the pop culture right now and i don't know well, yeah when you it. when you say you're a content creator that could mean you're a full-time youtuber or it could also mean you post pictures of your food to instagram <laughs> yeah. and so <laughs> so i don't know uh, where we where we lie on that spectrum wh- yeah wait, on on that spectrum i'd say we're probably closer to to food pictures unfortunately <laughs> but uh we're working our way up yes um uh, so with as many do you introduce yourself to people as a maybe i should start doing that just introduce yourself as a content hey like what do you do oh i'm a content creator i mean i think like terminology wise we could definitely do that but like i said is that like a positive thing like are we gonna be are we gonna be looked down upon when we call ourselves (laughs) (laughs) oh what do you create Ooh, a podcast that gets maybe on average like eight listens a week (laughs) what do you do asmr like no (laughs) asmr style maybe that's what this bonus should be maybe we should do the entire episode asmr so welcome back to uh we bombastic view uh where brent's gonna make some uh enjoyable sounds for us take it away brent uh uh what what um um Okay. That's all you get. We <laughs> Okay. 
This episode is going to mainly just be a uh, hypothetical, and as people know, more people means more energy to feed off of, so it might be a shorter hypothetical to the normal, but that is okay. But why is it just a hypothetical? Because what is a podcast? Even a podcast mini episode or bonus episode without a hypothetical. Uh, Non-existent. It's not a podcast. (laughs) But before we jump into that, we want to show some love for our fans at Unfillable Cups and all the support they've shown us. Take it away, Brent. All right. Ducks. You know about ducks. You've heard of them. The most famous of all ducks, Daffy Duck. Um, so the he he's a pretty famous duck, right? And th- things you know about birds, which may or may not translate to ducks. I didn't actually fact check this, but because I'm saying it, it's a fact. Um, birds they migrate south for the for the winter, right? Well, what you didn't know is that Daffy Duck is actually what caught like him migrating south is what causes the seasons to change. And unfortunately, recently, Daffy Duck, he's been getting tired of the same old, same old, right? It's like, oh, my goodness, we get winter for, like, three months. And then, oh, we get summer for, like, three months. Uh, this is so boring. And uh, so he decided he, he's going to mix things up, right? And so he started uh, traveling south and back and forth and back and forth in a day such that all four seasons are experienced within a single day. No longer will you be stuck in winter for three months at a time. You uh, you now experience the one quarter of your day is winter, and then another quarter of your day is spring, another quarter of your day is summer, another quarter fall, and then the very next day, it's winter again. And so the question is, is now that Daffy Duck has started doing this, I think he started uh, yesterday, so you probably might have noticed uh <laughs> the the seasons change so rapidly but the question is what's gonna happen okay uh, how's life gonna change first first off uh i never really thought thought of this but does the term flying south for the winter change depending on which side of the uh which like which side of the equator you're on oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question so like do people in like argentina say oh he's probably going north for the winter yeah or do they um, like or does yeah like that that's, yeah exactly what i'm thinking is that, <laughs> that is a uh, that is know. is locationist like uh a term like a uh prejudice type thing where it's like you're only allowed to say it because you have privilege because you're in this part of the world uh that's a good question um i don't know like theoretically they'd have to the, either they don't have the saying or they, it, the saying would have to be, go north for the... How many birds are... Do, uh, what kind of birds does, like... I don't know, Argentina's... Don't, they're, like, maybe South Africa. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I need to see a globe. Where's a globe at? <laughs> I don't have one here. Uh, come but, back. Tune back next week. Yeah. When uh, we yeah, took a full college degree's worth of research on birds and ducks alike. Yeah, I, I'm I'm about finished with my current degree path, and so I'll just tack on another four years and do a quick. Uh, I wonder what a studier of birds is. Pop quiz, do you know? No, I, I do not know the term. It's a birdologist. Stupid. Is that actually <laughs> what it is? <laughs> no, <laughs> literally no way on earth. Uh, but I want it to be. Uh, anyway, so I think the first my my very first question I think because like when you think of seasons changing, what's the first thing you think of? Okay, I like, think my I have I have two initial things. One's a positive, and one's more so an inconvenience. The inconvenience, well, ju- uh, go literal ahead. gut reaction. Like the, I know you said two, but there's I you probably thought of one before the other. She's yes, me your first I did. One. When you first said I wanted to initially make the joke, you no longer have to wait, or you no longer have to put so much work into freeing your car from ice or snow. You literally just have to wait. You on just have to wait maybe a few hours. Yeah, that was my well. First I mean, but one. it also needs some war. That's a ooh, that's a good. Th- so like rapid changes in temperature, like very much affect material strength and stuff and, and like plant life. glass. Well, the well, yeah. So like that. That's why I was trying. I was trying to get you to say like trees or plants or something. But now I don't want to go into that. We'll go into that in a second. <laughs> but um, the I'm thinking so like glass, right? The 
like it cannot do rapid temperature change which like granted so we're let's just say for the sake of simplicity um like 24 hours so like every every um every season lasts for six hours which six hours is a decent it's a like a decent enough time that it wouldn't um super matter it wouldn't like but i think it would degrade much quicker because like the six hours is enough for it not to be damaged instantaneously like right then but i think over time just like all materials in general would take damage or degrade much quicker yeah because like that even just so like specifically like water getting into like uh stuff for example and then freezing so expanding can cause issues and if that's happening every single day because like normally you can get like in winter it freezes and then it stays frozen and then um yeah yeah which also and i think that also like at least where we're at um i'm sure it's other places too but um like i feel like for us a winter doesn't really feel like winter until like the snow starts to stick which is Mm -hmm. what's needed for that is like the ground to like get cold too and uh that's part of i feel like is like a lot of the structures are still like warm so it's it's like the and like bodies of water are warmer so it takes a longer for it that to uh to adjust to a colder temperature so i wonder if i mean it's going to start ramping down by the time the six hours is up but is six hours enough of a winter for like say our area to fill up with like snow and stuff like would that be snow be able to stick mm-hmm. the i feel like the answer would have to well but the other thing is like it can't the question i guess is kind of what temperature did the system start at because it also like it doesn't have that much time to warm up yeah. either like so where where it's like what's the range of temperature now is like yeah that, well so like technically he Daffy Duck started doing this a couple days ago, which like it's technic. It's not has is it technically winter yet? No, it's fall still. Yeah, so I I think yeah, so I don't know. Especially the like temperatures have been very turbulent the past couple of days. So mm-hmm. um, That's it, it really right? depends on what day he started, but <laughs> yeah. uh, and what time of the day? Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, that was that's also quite. I'm kind of just assuming like starting at midnight is um the first like like uh midnight to 6 a.m is winter do we want to stick with that or sure um okay sure also that it also begs the question of technically it's like are we rotating is like the well yeah the seasons have nothing to do with the relative position of the earth and sun what am i saying it has yeah, entirely everything to do with where daffy duck daffy is. duck is, so that's not is even relevant. constantly changing the atmosphere but my qu- like the, I think the the issue with this hypothetical is I don't have nearly enough expertise in any of the questions I have. But so like trees, right? Because that's what I would have. That's what I would guess most people when you say like seasons changing. I think the first thing most people would say is trees. Okay. Because they either trees are like changing. They're either like growing new leaves, changing color leaves, or like they're losing leaves. And so my question is, if that's all happening within a 24, like what would happen to the trees? Because we're, since we're starting now, I'd say like a decent amount still have uh, green leaves on them. There are a couple, like decent amount of dead ones on some trees, but like the, like what, what's happening to the trees? What's the Lorax up to? I think along with that, an interesting uh, thing to question is like, Will this make bears and other animals that hibernate more active because they're only needing a night's mm. rest and so they'll be able to move around a lot more and not f- they're like once like they adapt they're not going to need to be worried about straying too far away from somewhere that they can't hibernate or bugs like how long because like that's true a lot of bugs die off in the winter how long could a bug survive for six hours in the winter yeah it's too interesting. Um, the, we're yeah, to, honestly i we're going to get our scientists in the lab to start uh, <laughs> get us yeah we really we didn't call in enough experts this episode <laughs> we uh we were so focused on uh daniel being captured by the russians we forgot to call all our um <laughs> the the botanists and uh apiarists yeah. what's happening with the bees what do you think the bees are doing <laughs> i so like 
I wonder, like, I, I guess it t- kind of all con- connects to multiple things we've said, but, like, do you think the amount a person's able to travel will be affected at all? Especially since winter will most probably be uh, late, uh, midnight uh, hours would... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like if that was, I was like, if that varies at all, I would have technically. So yeah, winter is, uh, or I'm sorry, summer is technically six p.m. to um, midnight. Wait, no, that doesn't make no, no, no. no. It's it is uh, noon to six p.m. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, what is it? So, Am I dumb? That so so you so, said you said midnight to six a.m. is winter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. So, yeah. So, my question is, I guess before you establish that, my thought was maybe travel times would be affected. Like, you don't really want to be out too long because the rapid, like, the flashing of temperature. I guess not technically flashing. Mm. Is it? What's what's the opposite of flashing? Because flashing is like... Um, rapid change. Rapid change, um, to, uh, the, but to a warmer temperature, right? Or is that oh, either yeah, way? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever uh, it is, like... You're like potentially there could be water on the ground and then it could be changed like the temperature could change really fast. Ooh, tornadoes! Tornadoes are probably happening like left and right with all the. I mean, like, potentially hurricanes changes. and stuff too. Just like yeah, uh, hurricanes all forms and of like wind. Yeah, um, it's blizzards, a very windy world. Like these generally, days. genuinely, blizzards could be happening. But could a blizzard you? happen? Because I th- I think that goes back to like even snow like i think it ooh, depends how like rapid daffy ducks affecting of the <laughs> atmosphere is because i think i think with all the science and facts we have so far i think it's definitely possible that a blizzard could happen in the middle of the night mm-hmm. but probably at yeah. the peak so probably like at 3 a.m the peak of winter is probably the yeah. time it's going to be able to happen initially when you brought up travel the what i just i thought of that i thought you were going to talk about was planes it's like i don't know if a that's plane true could really do well in such a like ch- changing environment yeah um i think i think with that like you'd almost have to like re- start relying on more like um trains or maybe subways or stuff like that because like you don't want to take a bike out because the rapid change of the weather could cause and the six thousand mile per hour winds yeah so <laughs> makes biking pretty dangerous yeah i mean even a car would be difficult like or dangerous i, I would imagine um, yeah so i think i think underground transportation underground is tunnels be, yeah. yeah underground tra- transportation i think we might have to learn how to uh dig and at a very fast pace build up our endurance we, a little bit did we just become mole people yes but on steroids <laughs> so think of think um, of like uh the ending of the incredibles where the uh the oh gosh the underminer that's what oh, the name the, was. yeah the underminer <laughs> that's the funny. most anticlimactic villain of all time yeah didn't he like didn't that storyline get resolved like two minutes into the second movie or oh yeah that? literally I, I think two minutes is generous it took him 37 seconds to beat him yeah like and that movie came out like what a decade and a half late after the uh-huh Original? And I, I still remember Samuel Jackson doing an interview, and he was like, "It was worth the wait." No, it wasn't. I do remember uh, that. Like, I enjoyed. I won't. I no, don't know. Okay, no. okay. I don't know. I, if I can go as far to say it was closure, but I enjoyed finally being like, "Okay, I'm no longer waiting for a sequel <laughs> yeah. to The Incredibles." It's like at least you've turned me down finally, and I'm not in <laughs> yeah. an eternal state of limbo of like what could have been. Yeah, I'm no longer chasing after this dream. Uh huh. Um, my question is though, right? So like, internet would like how would internet be affected? Because the the I'm trying to how how is Blockbuster coming back? So <laughs> because um. So if you didn't know, Blockbuster, right before they uh, went under, they actually went under and invested <laughs> in a lot of underground stores. Yes, so all we course. have to do is find them. And Every- bingo, bango, bongo, we're there. We have, uh, 
We have Blockbuster <laughs> back, ladies and gentlemen. Blockbuster sent out the news that they were going under. <laughs> they meant that they were going underground, but people just Stopped thought they showing meant up. that the yeah people thought they meant the business was failing. And so, but no, they're still they they're still alive and well. It's just they're underground. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh my goodness! Of course, how did I not think of this? Like I'm kind of proud that that uh was fully impromptu. I'm surprised. Mm. Uh. Oh yeah, ten out of ten. Ten out <laughs> of ten. Thank you. Thank you. Also. I think every sports game occurs during between the hours of what? Like, um, uh, wait, hold on. It's okay. I, I, I need to like write the, or not actually write this down, but just like say it out loud so I can, so midnight to six, uh, or I'm sorry, like tw the 12 AM to 6 AM is winter. Correct. So then 6 AM to noon is spring correct and so noon to 6 p.m is uh um, summer yeah and then 6 uh, p.m 6 p.m is fall yes okay so the so every sporting event has to take place between the hours of like 6 a.m and 6 p.m okay okay first off small comment my favorite part of the day is the evening and my favorite, like, season is fall. So, like... Yeah, that's a good point. Some people... That's interesting. Uh, like, my favorite season's winter, but... Yeah. But, uh, okay. Let's talk Olympics. Like, you, you touched on sports, but Olympics. We have winter and summer oh, Olympics. It's, it's, oh, man, that's a good point. Um, do they occur at the same time now? <laughs> like... Potentially. The, but, like, also, you don't, you have less time of the day each day to do the yeah sports. to accomplish the event so they might be spread much like day to day like time frame it might be a lot longer but like on the day uh timeline like it's only a small scale which makes watching it a lot more manageable i will say <laughs> yeah like you can't dedicate your entire day to watching things but now you can watch all the events it, yeah it's because just, uh... like it's going to be like happening over multiple months at that point whereas like to watch the olympics before either you have to no life it when you get home from work or you have to actually have no life and not go to work and watch all of the olympics uh-huh okay i've got a question okay like pumpkin spice lattes right do they, uh, is it still only around like thanksgiving time okay. and what interesting or interesting uh question just brought up so you know how like, the stereotype behind Starbucks is that there's always a long line. Sure. Like, it's busy, typically. Yeah. Well, now it's only really busy in the evening, which, don't get me wrong, like, it's exponential how busy they are at that time, but it keeps the business alive just because pumpkin spice lattes or whatever are only available during fall hours. Okay, so it is only available during fall hours. But if you want a winter or, like, a peppermint, whatever... Uh, season like the season like that winter season drinks you're gonna have to go late in the night and not everyone is up at that hour so it's it's a toss-up but starbucks will always recover that will be interesting so like technically so like fourth of july right or something if you celebrate i don't know why you'd celebrate fourth of july at like three in the morning but if you did it would be like possibly snowing or like christmas yeah if you celebrate midday it's uh, there's, See, there's I think, a heat wave. I think you're being very stereotypical with holidays and seasons. You're no longer going to be able to associate those because yeah. that's just that's instead of that holiday being a fraction of that season, it's now that season is a fraction of that holiday. That makes sense. Uh, so like it's so like before yeah. Christmas was just one day of winter. But now uh -huh. winter is just it's one just, yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, I see what. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> one quarter of Christmas. Uh -huh. So you're you're now gonna have to like you can't associate like like uh, fall leaves with Thanksgiving unless mm -hmm. uh, unless trees can keep up and you only celebrate during fall hours. I'm trying to like, cause the. Like, what things would no longer happen at the times they current... Like, for example, like, construction. Like, now construction only happens 
during certain hours of the day, but it does like they don't take off for the winter. Like I'm trying to think of do anything you, else like do that. Cons- does all construction take off for the winter? Not all construction, I but I, like a majority of projects are done during at least the start like, of warm projects time. because they are outside. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and they but he, like but here's the thing though, Brent. Like you can easily find eight hours between spring, summer, and fall. Mm-hmm. Like they, well, yeah, so these like, workers are sleeping during the winter. They're hibernating. Yeah. So now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Everyone now hibernates. Yeah, during yeah, the yeah. Winter. <laughs> so yes, I honestly, the projects are being closed down for the winter, but the winter like is only a few hours long. That would suck if you had like, if you like worked night shifts, like you only existed during the winter, <laughs> uh, like you you went to work and everything during the winter, and then you slept during summer and spring. Yeah, that would suck. But I mean, like someone like you who enjoys it, like. It might not be the yeah. worst thing ever. Well, yeah, but, like, I also enjoy change, which, like, theoretically, this is the best-case scenario for me of I, I get lots of change. <laughs> um, yeah. the, the, I, the, I, basically, con- concluding thoughts, unless you have anything else you can think of, I, I'd say basically all plants and animals are going to die. And so we're all going to die eventually, but yeah. that short time, especially that, because the insects are going to die, which they won't be well, able yeah. to help the plants. Well, yeah. So I, I think, I think the, well, no, I, and then I think like the plants probably can't grow very well. That or uh, everything and, like, learns new, to evolve very fast. Yeah. Well, or we like lots of greenhouses or we move underground or like basically that'd be, it, it'd be an interesting thing is like just the seasons changing that quick. It made earth uninhabitable yeah like so which is, a, is an interesting concept um interstellar i don't re- the it wasn't directly that was it it was it was like that the, was through. like the plants weren't growing for some reason or something well yeah but remember. either it's way the earth time. was uninhabitable not uninhabitable so they had to yeah. leave well yeah world. but i don't whatever anyway um but yeah do you have any more thoughts sir uh like I'll, I'll throw this into my final thoughts for the conclusion. But the other day I had a dream where I was like watching an interview with Will Smith and Will Smith was like <laughs> the, in the interview, he like, like kind of like low key mentioned the podcast and he like, <laughs> he, no, then he <laughs> looked at the camera and goes, yes, I listened to your podcast and just left. Oh it my goodness. Why would it have to be a dream? <laughs> Why? How do we, the, I, I, so you know the the like the theory of like the Kevin Bacon number, the theory of like seven degrees of separation. I've heard of it, but I do not recall details. So basic, honestly, we could this this could be an entire thing of a different episode. Um, but the idea is everyone's connect. You know, every other person on Earth within seven people, and like those seven okay. people are like you haven't passed them on the street. You know them on like a first name basis, okay. and so. Uh, also, I recently learned one. So you know me, first name basis, right? Correct. I know. Uh, w- so Christian, Christian's wife, uh, which I guess. So you also know Christian's wife on a first name basis. Her aunt um, lives next to the family of Brad Pitt, and wow. so, the, and the, assumedly Brad Pitt's family knows him on a first name basis. So what is? Uh, like within four within four degrees you know brad pitt yeah so like technically four people would have to make a phone call uh but like granted we'd have like i don't think they would actually do it but like theoretically within four phone calls we could have brad pitt on the show okay podcast listeners uh i need you to do your research <laughs> yeah. this week and we need find to know how we can contact will smith will smith. we will how we many will, degrees I, I don't want to insult him by saying this but we will settle for morgan freeman and by settle <laughs> i mean i would absolutely be uh ex- i'd take super any ex- like d-list celebrity like i i, I don't know, we'd take anyone <laughs> um but morgan freeman is just s plus tier so morgan freeman freeman will smith if you uh if you find out information about one of those two celebrities uh be sure to get in contact with us mm-hmm but uh, with that, I think that's going to wrap up this bonus episode. Actually, a lot longer than we thought it was going to be. 
Uh, so don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, follow, all those good things. Uh, and let us know what you thought about this episode. Let us know if you'd rather just hear nothing or maybe you don't mind these little uh, mini segments. Maybe with, you can't uh, stand Dan minus one host. And it's nice to have a break from him. Yeah. <laughs> the, maybe this was the sign you needed that we needed to just kick him off. By he's, kick him off, out. we mean not rescue him from the Yeah, and by kick him <laughs> off, we mean uh, call off the Navy 6 uh, SEAL team, <laughs> at, call back the nuclear submarines. <laughs> and um, the, I feel bad for Russia. is always the bad guy. But, like, pff, let's be honest. Russia's always the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Nothing against our Russian audience. I don't think we have a Russian audience. But if we did, we appreciate you just as much. But please give us Daniel back. Um, it's not Lindsay, that we think you, gotta... you guys are bad guys. It's just that we think you guys are powerful, confident people. And that's typically some qualities. And that intimidates you... us. As yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, no, I've seen enough Cold War movies. I know that the Russians are the bad guys. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts, Daniel. We're not actually going to threaten to kick you off. Just come back to us. Uh, Please. The, the Russians, uh, uh, they can't keep you for this long. Just come back. We know you're having fun drinking vodka or something just come back keep keep it safe out there kids don't drink alcoholic beverages it's bad for you um the yeah the, I, I think i already said my final thoughts but thanks again for listening even if this wasn't uh, a normal episode but you still got a hypothetical and then also shout out to mama hello there <laughs> how's it going but uh, with that, I think that's going to wrap up this bonus episode. And so I would like to wish you all to have a bombastic week, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>